In this video, we're going to take a look at a nice quick recipe to get a super rusty looking metal color. I've often used this technique on smaller pieces like swords and weapons and armor for D&D pieces, uh, orcs in 40K, Skaven in Warhammer Fantasy. I've not used it on a larger surface, so I wanted to try it out on one of these Necrons from the Indomitus box set. To start, I'm going to base coat all of the panels that I want to be this rusty steel colour later on with a brown. In this case, it's Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop, but honestly, any brand will do. We just want a nice solid brown base coat to work from. You could, if you wanted, use an airbrush to apply this, but I'm going to paint the skeleton on this model in a black. So it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other as to which is a quicker way of doing it. In the other video, I chose to airbrush. In this one, I thought I'd brush paint the base coat. I'm gonna take some Scale 75 Kalahari Orange, pop it on a sponge, touch it off until there's not much left. This paint has a really matte finish to it. That's why I chose it for this process. I'm using a pair of reverse grip tweezers to hold the sponge. It just makes it easier for me to get into all the surfaces. And you can see because there's not much paint on the sponge, I can push quite firmly against the model and create all these nice little speckles of slightly more fresh rust. Now I'm taking a lighter color, in this case, GW Tau Light Ochre. Because if you look at any reference pictures of rusted metal, it's not one uniform tone. Just like before, touch off the excess off the sponge so that you're not getting too many big blobs on there. I take a metal paint now, a silver GW lead belcher, and I'm gonna dry brush the panels. You can see I'm going at the model quite roughly now. I really wanna catch all of the edges and begin to put some sort of texture onto the surfaces as well. Really paying attention to all of those edges that will catch on things and scrape off the corrosion. These more messed up Necron models that you get in the Indomitus box, they give you all these cool little surfaces for this type of technique to really shine on. I've taken Vallejo model color black and painted the skeleton in now as if it's some sort of weird ceramic composite or something. Shows off the metal nicely too. Now I'm taking a burnt sienna or an orange oil paint here, and thinning it right down with Sansador thinner. And as I'm sure you can guess, this is gonna give us a nice rusty colored wash. I'm gonna apply this liberally all over the panels that I've just painted. It's quite thin as you can see, so it's going to act like a bit of a filter on the surfaces, by which I mean it'll ever so slightly tint them, or change the tone on there. In a similar fashion, I'm going to take a brown wash, in this case burnt umber, and wash all of the black skeleton with this colour. Now it's worth noting, I've not done anything to the acrylic paint underneath. I don't need to. I don't need to protect it with a varnish or anything like that, provided it's dry. This thinner and the oil paint is not going to react with it at all, so don't worry. Once it's dried off, I want to further push that horrible, dull, rusty finish by applying a couple of coats of a matte varnish, in this case, AK Ultra Matte, through the airbrush. You can see here that it's really knocked back the shadows and brought much more of the light colors to the fore. I think it looks pretty cool. But it's important now to play around with these finishes. So I'm gonna take my GW lead belcher again, and this time with a normal brush, I'm gonna pick out just those edges. So I'm not worrying about the center of the panels like I did with a dry brush, but I do wanna catch all those sharp edges. 
You can see I've got very little paint on the brush as well. And that's that steel or rusty metal, whatever you want to call it, finished. I think it looks pretty rad. For a little bit more colour, I'm going to pick out a few other areas of metal with scale 75 decayed metal. Make sure I get his little robo guts. And because we've heavily corroded the steel, we ought to do the same with this bronze copper colour. So I've taken GW Cyberite Green, any light turquoise paint will do. I've really, really watered it down. I'm just going to liberally wash it all over to create a sort of verdigris. Just like we did on the rusty steel, I'm going to go in with a brighter metal colour, in this case Dark Star Copper. And just pick out a few of the edges, just add a little bit of shine back. Dark Star's a really cool range of paints if you can get hold of them. They're very, very heavily flaked metallics, perfect for this sort of job. And just like in our other Necron video, I'm going to pick out all of the weird energy cell bits uh, using these inks. So to begin with, uh, a white acrylic ink. And Jared mentioned in the previous Necron video that he thought it would have looked cool if I'd done the ribs in the same way. So let's give it a go. Now we use a light green acrylic ink. It's not fluorescent or anything, it's just really bright. If you want to see more about this technique, check out the other Necron video. And here he is. This model's a great example of how combining different levels of finish can provide loads of contrast. So we have some areas of very, very flat matte finish, and we have other areas that are highly reflective, like those last little dots of metal colour that we applied. I think an army done like this will look pretty amazing on the table, and it's really ever so simple to do. As I said earlier, the rusty metal technique I've used here, I often use for painting things like weapons on models, and I was really pleased to see how it translated across to being a much more significant part of a model. Let me know what you think in the comments. So if you've enjoyed the video, then hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more from us, then hit subscribe as well. I'll see you next time.